time. So we will transition now and uh, welcome in our next guest. Very much looking forward to, and I know a lot of you are as well, to talking to the one and only Joanne Calderwood. She got some great news. Last week, she'll be fighting Valerie Letourneau in Ottawa, Canada in the first official UFC women's flyweight fight. How about that? 125 pounds. Joanne, how are you? I'm good, Terry. Good I'm, to see you. Good to see you as well. It has been a while. Long time no speak. Yeah. You've been avoiding me. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> we can get into that if uh, if you must. Um, so, first of all, what what fantastic Skype we have here. A great connection over in uh, Scotland. So, I appreciate that greatly. Um, it, you're, you're, you're looking crystal clear. But I, I just have to ask you about this because you inform me. You, you've changed your phone, right? You're going old school. Yeah. Where's this phone? Yeah. What is going on over here with this phone? Look at that Nokia. Why do you have that phone now? So before I went to Canada, I gave my iPhone 6 to my mum because, like, you know, like over there, I, my net my network wouldn't be working. So I was just like, well, there's no point in having a phone. Uh, so I just gave it to my mum. And, yeah, I've just been living off of my iPad whenever I need uh, any Wi-Fi or uh, Internet connection with anyone. This reminds me a lot of uh, Roy McDonald. I don't know if you've ever seen his phone or if he's upgraded, but for a long time he was rocking the the flip phone, the the older than old school one than you have. Um, and and I feel like he told me like it was kind of liberating for him. He didn't want all this information. Do you like it as well? Yeah, I love it. Like uh, I've been feel I've I've only just got that phone. Like before I didn't have a phone. I just had my iPad when I was in Canada, and I kind of got used to it and kind of enjoyed it you know uh, a little bit like when I went out and stuff I didn't have my phone and I wasn't like distracted so I just thought that it's something I should look at when I get back and then when I got back obviously it's a little bit harder being home and not having a phone so I was like you know what I'll just get a wee cheap throwaway phone <laughs> and uh, got that and it's been great I like it I respect Every, it. Everyone's everyone's been making a fool of it, but <laughs> it's it's all good. It's a, it's a good. I, I'm sure, like I'm sure, like in two weeks they will have it. <laughs> well, for now, it's a good conversation piece, so I, I say stick with it as long as possible. So let, let's 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 start chronologically here, because you win in July in Scotland. What a moment that was for you! And you were actually coming to New York around October, November. You were going to go train at Marcelo Garcia's. Uh, unbeknownst to our audience, you were actually going to visit us in studio, which was very exciting to us. Uh, you're over there in Scotland. It's very rare that you're here. So that was exciting. And then we get the news that you are fighting Paige Van Zant, which is even more exciting. You're fighting in December. And then we get the news, unfortunately, that you got injured and you still came to New York, but you didn't want to come on this show. You didn't want to talk about it. What, what, what kind of place were you at? Were, were you devastated that you weren't getting the fight? You just didn't want to talk to anyone? Yeah, like everything was going great for the start of camp and then obviously this was my first kind of major injury and I was, uh, uh, other things were going on and stuff so this was kind of just like a cherry on the top and I've been going in this spiral of uh, being up and then something happening and going down so uh, I've managed to deal with the kind of vicious circle and yeah, at that time I wasn't like... You know, I was going to come on and then I was like, no, because it's shit think talking about it. I felt like I had let a lot of people down, not not only myself, but my fans and everyone was like so excited about the fight. And I was like, I've blown this amazing opportunity. And yeah, I was just like, and being in New York and my two friends were away training and I was like, just dragging my arse through New York, trying to like... Well, I was doing my Christmas shopping, but it wasn't what I wanted to do, yeah. you know. What was the injury that you suffered? Uh, my MCL, I sprained it in wrestling, like, the week I got back from Thailand. Okay. Uh, but you didn't need surgery, right? No. But you did I just had to uh, take time off and then rehab it. How difficult was it for you? I don't know. Did you watch it live? The fight, you know, Rose ended up replacing you, of course, and we know what happened in the fight. She dominated Paige and, and, and submitted her. How difficult was it for you to either A, watch it live, or B, you know, find out shortly thereafter what happened? It, it was very hard, but at the end of the day, like, I knew I had, at that time, I had, I was, I knew I was going to Canada and I had this new journey and I was looking forward to 
gone on and even though I didn't have that fight I was I'm glad the, the two of them put on a hell of a fight and it does suck like as a fighter you know like when you watch any kind of event you want to be the one in there so when you know that it should have been you then it sucks just that little bit more did you stay up to watch it live no, no. I, I always just watch it the next day Okay. Um, yeah. Who wants to stay up that late? I don't know how those European fans do it. It's unbelievable, but I give them credit as well. Um, so that, so you say you're going to go to Canada, specifically the greatest city in Canada, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. You go to the Mecca that is TriStar Gym. Why did you decide to make that move? You you have obviously been a, a part of the gym in, um, in in Scotland, Grip House, right? For forever. Yep. And then you decide to make the journey over to Montreal. Why did you decide to do that? I just uh, just decided that I needed a more professional team around me. I wasn't really getting the MMA. I needed to be more my jiu-jitsu, more MMA based, my wrestling more MMA based. So, uh, and I was just kind of looking to to go to Canada because it's a place I want to go and uh, I had been watching Farazi's instructionals on YouTube his YouTube channel and I just and then I spoke to Joe Duffy at the Glasgow card and he's like why don't you come over and try it and obviously Stevie Ray my uh, one of my teammates have been there and he he rated it so I was like you know what I've got nothing to to lose and it just seemed like they've got the dorms and stuff so I was like Fuck it, I'm going to go um, and see what happens. How did the team in Scotland react to this news that you were going to go train over there? Well, the team in Scotland, like, I'd, I think everyone knows, like, I had been in a relationship with my head coach for, like, seven years. So, like, we've been separate, separated for a, a few years now, but at the same time, we we're still trying to work together and then, we weren't working together and now like at that time we had completely like there was no like four weeks before my Scotland fight there was completely no going to be any working together so that kind of that was hard for me to move on with my career because I've always had someone there tell me I should do this and dealing with everything so I just felt like I needed a new team around me and I had to build this up and everyone at the grip house understood and everyone wants me to do well over here so uh, I'm sure there's a few people that thought it was a bit shit and stuff but at the end of the day I've learned I've had to do what's best for my career and it wasn't at that time and even now it's not it's not good I need to be uh, the best and to be the best you need the the best people around you and not that just that just the number like the UFC people that are at uh, TriStar all the, the sparring partners I'm exposed to and the high level coaching that I was exposed to was just at the top level you need you need all that stuff <laughs> yeah you know I don't know if you remember this but um, I believe the last time you were on this show you talked about some issues that you were dealing with but you never actually said what you were dealing with so I'm assuming I, I, I had no idea uh, about any of that stuff with with your coach is that what, what was going on is that why you just didn't seem to be yourself in the fights and all that yeah <laughs> uh, I don't know it's just been like for the past two years since I came out of the tough house it's just been one thing after another and it's not it's but now everything's good and uh, I'm focusing on the 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 future I had a few counseling sessions and stuff and I think that done me well because I was always like thinking of it the past and I was always like thinking of uh, what people were saying and that kind of stuff and it really hurt me that I couldn't be part of uh, the team anymore and uh, yeah the, you know what it's like everyone's got their shit to deal with but now I just kind of want to concentrate on the future and uh, obviously I've got the fight that I wanted and uh, looking forward to that. So you get to Montreal and it's a, it's, a, it's a new country, a new gym, a new team. Obviously, there are some familiar faces. You know some of the people. What was it like initially for you? Did you feel comfortable? Did it take some time? What was that experience like? It was amazing. Like 
within for the first two days at TriStar, I was, felt like I was at home, and it was just obviously the train. I love training, and I would train with anyone, uh, but it was just within two days, I was like, yeah, I'm at the right place, and I just felt like I settled in, and everyone was really nice, and I got on well with everyone, and uh, for as the head coach, I was like. I connected with him and uh, knew that we would get on well in a working relationship. Does it help? I mean, it feels like there's this uh, European invasion at that at that <laughs> team. Also, uh, Tom Breeze, Arnold Allen is uh, is killing it. He's there as well. Does, does it help having you know some Europeans there? D- does that mean anything to you? Does it make you feel more comfortable? Uh, yeah. The I would just say the banters, uh, like mm-hmm. they're they're more on with it and maybe they can understand me better than some of the other guys but (laughs) (laughs) but no like I'll go if there was no one there you know right Uh, but it's just a little bit nicer that especially the guys are they're cool and uh, they're funny now you mentioned these dorms a little known fact I went to elementary school with the guy who owns the building uh, that that houses TriStar and these dorms, uh, a man by the name of Robbie Stein, uh, which is, you know, kind of crazy that he owns it. And and we went to, you know, elementary like 20 or so years ago. Uh, What was that like for you? What's it like living in the dorms? Because predominantly it's men living there, right? Oh, yeah. There was a few girls that came and go like for a few weeks. But yeah, it's mostly the guys that are in there. But they, they just treat me like a sister and it's all good. And Robbie, Robbie's there every day and, uh, yeah, he's he's some character. He'll be, <laughs> he'll be glad to know that he's on here, but... Oh, that uh, I name-dropped yeah. him? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but but so how does, it, how does it work? Do you get your own room or is it like, how, how does that work? Because you're living there for like four months or so, right? Yeah, I've got my own room and... Okay. Yeah, uh, on shower and stuff, but share my bathroom and all that kind of stuff in the kitchen with the guys. Does that get a little annoying to be living with fighters for several months? Um, I was, you know, I was used to it with the uh, tough. I done the tough like, That's true. with girls, and I, I would say like the guys are obviously better. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, it was tough. Like that's why I came home because I was like homesick and you know it's worth it when you've got that fight at the end of the when you come in at night and you're like had a long day and you're like you just want to go to your bed but and be in your own company but uh, when you have a fight you know it's just it kind of drives you that wee bit more but uh, with the family and stuff I was just homesick and although everyone was nice over there but uh, you know what it's like it's not like the same sure your poor mother she must have been missing you like crazy as well was it tough for her to have you leave yeah but like i don't know if you see my video on instagram she was like i uh, surprised her i didn't tell her i was coming home oh yes she knew it she knew i was homesick and she knew i was a little bit down and stuff and she's like don't come home you'll regret it and all that and then i turned up on the door and she opened the door in her dressing gown and she was like what are you doing here <laughs> <laughs> That is amazing. So, so you came home, but you're planning on going back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When do you go back? I came home. Uh, I think like in a week or so. I'm just waiting for my uh, flight details. Okay. So you just came home to sort of recharge your batteries. And renew my passport. Ah, that okay. Like t- Ten years old. Man. Oh my. <laughs> um, and and now just, I have to ask, what did you think of my city, my hometown, Montreal? Did you like it? Did you get to go around and 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 see? Did you? Did you get to like live it up a little bit there? Yeah, I went out a few times as well and uh, it was lovely. Just the people are really, really nice. And I mean, it was cold and stuff, but yes. I didn't think it was that bad. What about the <laughs> French? How do you get on with that? Bonjour. I just like oh, wow. well say done. bonjour and then hello and then they know <laughs> that I can't speak French. But uh, I tried a little bit like to say ça va and tiny little bit but I should probably learn it now what about one of but my every, f- go ahead sorry but everyone loved my accent and then yes. it kind of made it a little bit easier because well, I felt bad of course uh, they can understand what about one of my favorite places which just so happens to be right next to TriStar the Orange Julep have you been there 
No, but Come it's on. just around the corner. It's right around the corner. Yeah. You gotta go. Yeah, but I had I had like mixed reviews from it. People said it was good, and then people said it was who's, uh, rubbish. Who's saying it's rubbish? They don't know what they're <laughs> talking. It must be one of those foreigners. Are the healthy healthy ones? Well, maybe yes, it's the healthy ones. <laughs> yes, uh, then I can understand. But I always like walk past it and think if I could like run up and do a Superman punch and with a that would be like, a great picture. Punch- <laughs> yeah. For those that don't know, it's a massive orange. It's gigantic in, in the middle, right, right next to TriStar. Uh, I do suggest before you start cutting weight that you go over there and, and try it out. By the way, being at TriStar, did you ever run into George St. Pierre? Was that kind of crazy, like a legend being in the gym? Is he, is, he, is he nice to you? Is he showing you any tips? Have you had any interaction with him? Uh, not so much GSP. Uh, he does the class every Monday. Uh, it was really good getting technique off him and stuff and he's a really good coach and he'll always like give you di- uh, examples of when he's used it in the fights and oh, stuff yeah. so I thought that was pretty cool but uh, no I've mostly Rory that I sparred with Rory a few times and you sparred with Rory uh, yeah wow that's amazing yeah he's like <laughs> he probably walks around what does he walk around at like 190 or so this is only like we're only like kind of like messing about playing oh, like I thought full sparring elbows and stuff. <laughs> no. What was that like? He'd he'd knock me out. Uh, it was re- really cool because I really I enjoy watching Rory fight, and I know he likes to kind of play around the way I do, and it was just cool to see and then cool to actually do it with him. Rory's the man. Um, okay, yeah. so this news comes out that you're fighting Valerie Letourneau, who coincidentally is from Quebec. You're fighting her in Ottawa. So this is great for you, right? Because you're going to be in Montreal leading up to the fight. So you just have, it's only 90 minutes away. Is that the plan? You're just going to stay till the fight? Yeah. Um, Yeah. And the interesting twist is it's happening at 125. The UFC doesn't have a flyweight division for the women. Why is this happening at 125? I don't know, actually. (laughs) Because that... Because... Funny story is like Sean asked me, Sean Shelby asked me to fight uh, an opponent on Canada, and I said yeah, but can we do it catch weight because it was like in seven weeks, uh, and what is the UFC's plans for making a flyweight division? And then I just asked them out a like chance. I knew I was, I kind of thought I would have been like. Uh, Shut up, bitch, and get on a diet. <laughs> You've signed your contract at one fifteen. But actually, he got back to me, and he was like, "Let me know." And then next thing, he's like, "Okay, what about Valerie at one twenty-five?" And I was like, "Perfect, let's wow. do it." And then he's like, "Okay, let's. I'll try and get the green light." And then he did. And then Bob's your uncle. You don't ask, you don't get. Yes, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> but, <laughs> Amazing. but really, like. Uh, I can well. I could probably make 115 in the next seven weeks, but I just didn't want to kill myself. And uh, it's been hard to like. I haven't been walking around at my normal uh, walk around weight, uh, and I don't think I could like when I done it when I was going in the house two months before, and then when I was in the house, I was like miserable. I was like eating like two eggs a day and like just chicken and spinach and. I just, I just don't want to walk around like that. Obviously, I want to walk around healthy and uh, happy. So it's been hard. And usually, for when I make one fifteen, I usually need like ten weeks' notice and just bring it down gradually. But uh, the fights that were coming up were like short notice, and I'm like, I, if if it's one twenty five, I could easily make these fights, and I could take them on short notice but 115 just like it would kill me did sean say to you that they're planning on actually starting this division and having a champion and all that do you have any insight in that no no he just says uh, because when i asked and he says oh let me check because we don't even have that division i was like yeah no (laughs) yeah (laughs) no kidding you know what you know i think uh, there's going to be a lot of girls that want to come down and want to come up so I think it's going to be an interest if they do bring it in. I don't know if it's a one-off, but I, I'm, you know what the UFC is like. They're usually one step ahead, and they've probably maybe been thinking about it, and uh, let's hope they have been. But 
Is that the perfect weight, though, for you? If they do open up that division, is that where you would prefer fighting? Yeah, okay. because I like to be active and uh, to to take fights on, like, like this one, like, not that bad. It's, like, seven weeks, but even, like, to take uh, one at four weeks and stuff, I would be able to make 125, uh, so that would be perfect. And why do you like this fight against Valerie so much? She's a tough out. She hasn't fought since her fight against Ioanni on Jacek in November, but she's a tough cookie. She's 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 a she's a tough out, as I said. Um, why do you like this matchup? I just like her because the fight she gave Joanna, and she's a really good fighter. And like you said, she's really tough, and I just see it as a good challenge. And uh, before, like when I had been asking Sean for. I wanted to get on the Canada card, so I was like saying, give me Randa, give me Valerie, like I'll fight any of them just to get on the Canada fight. And then he was a bit kind of like, oh, but Valerie's just coming off the title fight. And that kind of like made me more determined that I wanted her as a fight because I felt like I I knew I could prove me and I could prove him and uh, prove anyone else wrong that... She was coming off a, a loss to Joanna, the champion, but at the end of the day, it's a fight. Will Faraz be in your corner for this fight? Yeah. All right. How about that? So, so like I said earlier, I mean, I, I never knew why, and I tried to ask back then, but one of the, the worst kept secrets in this sport was that you just, you weren't there. Like, there was something going on, but no one wanted to talk about it. Is it fair to say that JoJo is back, that you got your mojo back, JoJo's mojo is back, that you f- you're feeling good, you're confident, this is the Invicta Calderwood, this is the one going into tough, like, do you feel it? Because I kind of sense it via this Skype that you're, you're, you're a different person than the last time you were on the show. Is that accurate? Do you feel that way now? Okay. All you needed was to go to Montreal. That's it. Yeah, and have some amazing people around me. And obviously I got counselling a wee bit, so that helped as well. And now I'm just like, I just know I can't control anyone else's... uh, I, I just feel like I'm more happy at myself. And yeah, and I'm looking forward to getting back in there and enjoying it again. Does this does this kind of feel like the start of your UFC career? Like you want to forget about those other fights, and now you can really prove to the UFC fans who you are as a fighter? Uh, not really forget, because like you know, everything happens for a reason and stuff. It just took me longer than I wanted to, so and I took obviously a loss in a, a stupid fight. So, uh, but being like my last fight, like I was a bit kind of over keen and. Uh, <laughs> Actria Maddy is uh, one of the guys says at the gym. So obviously I, you have to be smart in this game and don't want to do that again. But yeah, everything happens for a reason, Aru, and everything's looking up now. <laughs> well, that is fantastic news. I know you have a very loyal fan base. They must be. They're. I know they're very supportive, but they must be very happy to hear this. This is great. Um, welcome back. It's great to have you back on the show. It's great to have you back in in the fight game, feeling good, smiling again, loving life. It's a beautiful thing. So I wish you the best of luck on uh, June 18th in Ottawa. Beautiful place. Have you been to Ottawa? No. I've oh. seen the pictures. So it looks amazing. Yes. It's our nation's capital. Yep. So it's a very important place. Um, and I think that's a great fight. You versus Valerie Le Tourneau at 125 pounds. Uh, Joanne, really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. I know you're back home, but you took out some time for us. Thank you. Um, good luck with the, 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 the temporary phone over there. Good luck with the passport. And uh, good luck in training back home in Montreal. Uh, I think that's a great place for you. And I, I wish you all the best June 18th. Can't wait for the fight. Thank you. Thanks, Ariel. Have a good day. Same to you. There she is, the one and only Joanne Calderwood. What a pleasure it is to uh, to have her on the show. As always, just a great person, and and great to see that she's got her smile back, like like Shawn Michaels way back in the day. He lost his smile, got it back. Joanne Calderwood's smile is back, ladies and gentlemen. That's fantastic news.